Hi everyone and welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. As you can see, I'm in my car because there was a series of technical issues and downed Wi-Fi's and no service and it was, it's been super fun 15 minutes trying to figure out how to get online, but we figured it out. So I'm here <laughs> recording live from my car in the parking lot, but we're here. Um, I'm filling in for Pastor Greg tonight because he is recovering from surgery. But if you've been following on Facebook, then you'll know that his surgery went well. And he is recovering, um, but he asked for your prayers. He would love to go home and he is in quite a bit of pain. So if you would just continue to pray for him um, and the whole family as they just um, kind of navigate this, this surgery and recovery. Let's pray. Father God, we are so thankful to be here um, studying your word together. And Lord, I just ask that tonight you would help us to um, see something new in your word, Lord. Even if we read this scripture a million times, Lord, I ask that you would speak to our hearts tonight and that you would reveal something new in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, last week, Pastor Greg shared from Romans 6, verses 1 through 14, and I'm going to continue right where he left off in verse 15. I'm going to get started by just reading the scripture passage with you guys today, and then we'll go through verse by, by verse, and we will talk about all the things um, that, that Paul was trying to convey in this passage of scripture. So let's start by reading Romans chapter 6, verse 15. It says, We certainly shall not sin just because the law no longer rules us, we certainly shall not sin because of God's grace. You know this fact. When you give yourselves to obey someone, you become that person's slaves. If sin controls your life, you will die. But if you obey God, you will become righteous. Thanks be to God. You used to be slaves to sin, but now you gladly obey what we taught you. God has freed you from sin. Now righteousness controls you. Because of your human weakness, I have written this in a way that you can understand. You used to offer parts of your body as slaves to a sinful life. You were becoming more and more wicked. But now give your bodies as slaves to a righteous life. Then you will become holy. You used to be slaves to sin. At that time, righteousness did not matter to you. But you did things then that now cause you to be ashamed. You did not receive any benefit from them. The result of these things is death. But now that Christ has freed you from sin, God has made you his slaves. The benefit that you receive causes you to live a holy life. And, as, and the result is eternal life. When you sin, the only result of your efforts is death. But eternal life is a free gift from God. And we receive it because of what Christ Jesus our Lord has done. Well, in verse 15, Paul kind of repeats what he says in verse 1, that the law no longer rules them. They're not bound to the law the way that they were before Jesus died on the cross. But to con Sorry, I think there's like a blip in the internet, but we're going to keep going. It's, but to continue on in sin is a terrible and kind of not a great idea. If you, they, he's talking to them and saying, if you've really accepted God's grace, then you're going to try to obey him. Um, then in verse 16, he says, you know this fact. When you give yourself to obey someone, you become that person's slave. And if sin is controlling your life, you will die. But if you obey God, you will become righteous. Well, here he's saying that people who choose to obey someone become that person's slave. Um, my mom had mentioned, I talked about my mom on Sunday and I'm going to talk to her about her and she's watching tonight, but my mom had shared something with me that I found fascinating that, um, in that time there was something called a bond servant and it was a servant who, um, maybe owed a debt or was, um, supposed to work for somebody as their servant for a certain period of time. And after that debt had been repaid, if they so chose to, they could stay and continue working for that person. And so that would be a bond servant. In other words, they weren't obligated to be there. 
but they were going to serve it. And when I was reading this passage, that kind of came back to my mind because we're not obligated to serve the Lord and we're not obligated to pursue sin. But what we do is kind of, kind of in that regard, like I'm saying I'm going to serve the Lord or I'm going to serve a, a sinful life. It's kind of like being a bond servant. I'm saying I don't have to, but I'm choosing it. And I think Paul here is talking to them about when you choose to obey someone, you become their slave. And a slave does everything that their master orders. A person who sins becomes say, sin's slave. And the result of sin is a spiritual death. And those who obey God are going to live in the right way because that's what they're choosing to do. And God has forgiven them. Now, we're all going to continue to sin because we are flawed humans, um, but we not something that we pursue. We give up the sin to pursue God's goodness and to, to do what's right in the eyes of the Lord. And yes, we're going to make mistakes, but that's not what Paul's talking about. He's talking about just continuing on in sin, just saying, ah, God's grace is going to cover me anyway. So he's saying, don't do that. That's not a good idea because you are going to be a slave to that sin. And the people who are a slave to sin, that result is a spiritual death. But those who obey God will live in the right way and God has forgiven them and he has considered them to be righteous. Nobody can serve sin and serve God. It says in Matthew that nobody can serve two masters. He then in verse 17 says, Thanks be to God. You used to be slaves to sin, but now you gladly obey what you were taught. Well, he's praising them because they have accepted God's promise and they're obeying him. And like other new Christians, they're learning how to please God. And since the beginning of the first church, the apostles taught um, how to like, you know, what the ways of the Lord and what was right and what they had learned. And Paul um, could have, you know, come down on them and said, you're still sinning, but he's not because he understands that they're just people like he is. And so he's saying, it's good that they want to please the Lord. He's proud of them that they have chosen to believe um, what they've been t been teaching them about how to please the Lord and that they're they're loving the Lord so much that that they don't want to sin anymore and that they desire to pursue a life um, that is pleasing to the Lord. So he's kind of he's praising them there in verse 17. Um, in verse 18, he says, God has freed you from sin now righteousness controls you and then in verse 19 he says because of your human weakness i have written this in a way that you can understand you used to offer parts of your body as slaves to a sinful life you are becoming more and more wicked but now give your bodies as slaves to a righteous life then you will become holy well here he's saying god's freed them from sin just like you and i we're free from sin so they can become as slaves into, to him. And, and, and again, it's that choosing to pursue God. It's God doesn't going to, when we give our hearts to the Lord, he doesn't make it automatic that we never make mistakes. But there should be something in us that wants to please him. And that's what Paul's talking about. And he's, he's not real, he's, he's kind of saying like, I'm breaking this down for you so that you can understand. He's comparing the Christian life to that of a slave because it's language that they would have understood at that time. He also says that they're kind of slow to understand and they need someone to remind them about the results of sin. You know, even we need reminders sometimes. I get caught up in things. Uh, I get frustrated. That would probably be the thing that I struggle with the most. And I still need people to remind me that, hey, slow down. Stop getting frustrated because I sin in it. And so he, we're all kind of simple people. And we do need reminders of what sin, the result of our sin will be sometimes. And it's like the effect when someone becomes a slave. That person has to learn how to obey their master. In the end, the master controls the slave completely. And if Christians begin to sin, they will soon become more and more wicked. It, it is easy to sin at first in small ways, but one sin follows another. And worse, sins and worse and worse sins will follow after that. However, if we are Christians who obey God and we begin to um, live a holy life and our lives will, per will please the Lord. And so um, 
he goes on to say in verse 20 through 22, he says, you used to be slaves to sin at the time. Righteousness did not matter to you. You did things then that, that now cause you to be ashamed. You did not receive any benefit from them, and the result of these things is death. But now that Christ has freed you from sin, and the benefit that you receive causes you to live a holy life, and the result is eternal life. Well, here um, we see that sin does not really benefit anyone. He's trying to help them understand. It just controls people. It ruins people's lives and it causes death. Death is what Revelation calls like the second death, when we're separated from the Lord. And that's a terrible punishment, but it is the result of sin. And it's permanent. But, okay, what I was saying was that people don't have to suffer the punishment of sin because Christ died so that we could be free from the power of sin. And we are free as soon as we invite him into our lives. Then, because Christ has freed us from sin, we can be God's slaves or God's bondservants. We can choose to obey the Lord. And we can live a holy life on earth. And afterwards, we will live with God in heaven. Lastly, in verse 23, he says, When you sin, the only result of your efforts is death. But eternal life is a free gift from God. And we receive it because of what Christ Jesus, our Lord, has done. He likened it like this, like a soldier received his pay because of he earned it. Just like when we go to work, we earn a paycheck. It's our wages. They're what we deserve. Sometimes we feel maybe that it's less than we deserve when we go to work and we get our paychecks at the end of our pay period. But you understand what I'm saying. We go to work and we earn a wage and it's what we deserve. A slave does hard work as well, but he doesn't receive any wages. But when we sin... The way, it says the wages of our sin is death. Death. But Jesus took that death from us. He took the wages of our sin. So because they were honestly something I, didn't, I don't want. I don't want to earn death. Um, but, he, but he took that from us and he gave us new life. Paul is explaining here that of pursuing a life of sin gets us nothing but death in, in the end. It never brings anything good. But when we have a, serve, live a life that is obedient to God, he gives us only good things. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. And a, so a slave's effort, efforts or a sinful person's efforts, really, they benefit of nothing in the end. But Paul's explaining that Christians who used to be slaved in sin, in other words, sin was their master. It controlled their lives. They received nothing, but death, but death was coming. But God's grace is wonderful, and he gives us a free gift that nobody deserves. People receive this gift of eternal life by faith in what Jesus did. People receive this gift freely when they invite Jesus into their lives. Nobody can earn salvation. Only Jesus could pay the price. And he did that when he died on the cross. And so Christians are glad, are glad that Jesus is their Lord. They are choosing to make him their master. This is a really neat passage because I, I often forget, or especially when I'm talking to my children or other people about salvation, we forget sometimes that it's not just a prayer that we pray, but it's a choice that we make. When we say yes to the Lord, we're saying, yes, Lord, I'm going to serve you. You are going to be my master. And we are going to deal with sin in our lives. A lot of times um, I've noticed in my life that God has slowly taken sin out of my life. It's not an instant thing. Although I would like to say that I probably sin less than I did when I was younger. I'm sure I just sin in different, but I'm not by, anyways, I'm by far a perfect person. But, you know, I, there's certain things that as an adult now, or as someone who's been walking with the Lord for a while that I catch before I do. 
And I'm thankful to the Lord for that because my desire really is to walk and, and in this life doing things that please the Lord. But that's not always the case. And I do, you know, make mistakes just like everybody else. And so I love this passage of scripture because it reminds me that this is something that I'm going to wake up and choose every day. Lord, I am choosing to serve you today. And I know that I'm going to make a mistake, but your grace has covered that. And I'm thankful for that. But I'm choosing to please you today. And hopefully I get it more right today than I did yesterday. And so that's my prayer, is that in reading this passage that we will wake up tomorrow and say, Lord, I'm choosing to be obedient to your word today. I'm choosing to be obedient to you today. And Lord, I thank you for your grace that has covered all the sins that I've ever made and all the ones that I'm going to make in the future, Lord. But my heart is really just wanting to, to live a life that is pleasing to you and make me better today than I was yesterday. And so that is my heart for um, this passage and that's the thing that I'm going to take with me. Um, this is probably shorter than what Pastor Greg does um, but hey I did it and I think we're all here together so thanks for hanging out with me for that almost 20 minutes um, but I would like to close in prayer. Father God thank you so much for your word Lord but thank you is not enough to say, to like ever express how I feel about the grace that covers me. Lord, thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for setting me free from sin. Lord, I am so grateful that we can all come together, read your word, learn more about how you want us to live. And you're not just leaving us in the dark, hoping that we get this life right, Lord, but no, you've left perfect instruction. Lord, and that I just pray right now that everyone who watches this video, whether they're live or they watch it later, Lord, Lord, that they come to understand the deepness and the fullness of the of what took place on the cross, Lord God. Lord, I ask that you would help us that every day, remind us, Lord God, to wake up and choose to be obedient to your word. And Lord, that we would see good things in our lives, Lord. And I ask that you would make us very aware of the times when we are choosing to sin, Lord God. And Lord, that we would um, not be ashamed, Lord, but we would come to you, ask for forgiveness. Lord, can turn around in, in repentance and move forward, Lord God, because you have called us um, out of slavery, out of death, Lord God, and into life. And we thank you and we praise you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Keep praying for Pastor Greg, um, and we'll talk to you soon.